What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.5 beta 4 for registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got the fourth beta for iPadOS 18.5, watchOS 11.5, macOS Sequoia 15.5, tvOS and HomePod version 18.5, visionOS 2.5, and then we also got the third RC for macOS 14.7.6 and 13.7.6. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 18.5 beta 4. So starting off with the size of this update, it came in at a relatively large 838.9 megabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, which of course was coming from beta 3. Now, if we go ahead and check out the new build number for this update, so if we go back out of there, go into our settings, general, about, 18.5, the new build ends with an A. So it's 22F5068A. So that indicates that we are most likely going to see the RC release next, which is gonna most likely be next week. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And if we go down to the modem firmware, that remains at 1.60.02 for the iPhone 16 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.5 beta four? And the first thing is inside of our settings. If we go into our settings and go to general and then down to Apple care and warranty, this section of course has been updated for iOS 18.5 with the new header. And it's also changed inside of the section sections as well. So if we go into one of these devices here, you will notice that right here above the serial number and now shows the full kind of detail of that device. Before it just said iPhone 16 and it did not say iPhone 16 Pro Max. So it's been updated to be more specific with the model of each of your devices here in this warranty section. And I do believe that this was an over the air update. So it's not necessarily new with beta four. It will show up in beta three as well, but it was just updated after beta four got released. I also noticed that with beta four, if I go down to show more, these now populate instantly. I had issues on the previous two betas where it would just load for a second and it may not show every one of my devices. Now it loads instantly and it shows all my devices, no problem. This fourth beta also hints at two new wallpapers that are coming soon. So you can see the kind of descriptions here for what these wallpapers are going to look like. This was found inside of the code. And I actually threw one of these into ChatGPT, you know, Dolly to make an image. You can see this is what one of those wallpapers might look like. Of course it will look better, but this is kind of an idea as to what one of these wallpapers could look like. Now, of course, new wallpapers were always expected for iOS 18.5. We almost always get a new Pride wallpaper with the 0.5 updates. So I would expect to see that when the RC version gets released. That's typically when we see the new wallpapers roll out. Now, also, if you had issues with CarPlay, those issues might be fixed here with this latest beta. Some of the fixes that we saw in iOS 18.4.1, some of those may not have been addressed in the previous beta. So if you are having issues with CarPlay, check it out on beta four because they might very well be fixed. This includes issues with playing music, connectivity issues where your device just cannot connect the first time. Issues like that may very well be resolved here with beta four. Now here's a little behind the scenes detail. So Apple did have a backend feature called live storage exclave, and that was a feature complete, uh, you know, kind of feature. So it means it was ready to go, but it was removed here with iOS 18.5 beta four. So based on the name of live storage, you know, it sounds like something maybe related to secure live storage syncing, maybe something tied to iCloud. I'm not exactly sure what that feature, you know, consists of, but they did pull it here this late in the beta cycle. So apparently it didn't meet their standards. Maybe that will return in the RC or a future release. Now also in beta three last week, Apple did also add a curious feature flag called flying unicorn. So this is related to find my, and again, we don't really know what this is because it is in the back end code and it's kind of a, you know, just made up name, but that is something that Apple is apparently working on related to find my. And also on the back end with beta four, Apple added an entitlement related to Apple intelligence. So an entitlement is essentially just a clue that something new is happening or changing behind the scenes in the code. So this one is called generative experiences. So it seems like Apple is tweaking something related to generating an image and also writing tools. So both of those are going to be tweaked and potentially better here with iOS 18.5. And it's important to note that this is related to the analytics. So it's not necessarily like a big model change or anything. It's just related to the analytics that Apple is able to 
collect more data on these AI features. And then you can see some of the other backend changes, you know, code related changes here with this fourth beta compared to beta three. And then I've also had some people ask me if the buttons returned to the recently deleted folder inside of the photos. And as I've explained before, no, the only reason those even returned to begin with an iOS 18.5 is because that was, you know, that build of iOS 18.5 was actually based off of iOS 18.4. So it was an older build. I do not anticipate those changes to recently deleted ever coming back with 18.5 and maybe not until iOS 19, if that. And then also the cellular control center toggle is still broken. As you can see, I only have three bars, but the individual cellular toggle still shows that I have four bars. However, it is fixed inside of the platter right here, the connectivity platter. It shows and updates in real time as it's intended to do. Now, as far as the performance and battery life goes, I did go ahead and run a Geekbench test after installing this update, shortly after installing this update, and we scored a 3529 on the single core, 8640 on the multi core. So you can see how that compares to a much later run of this test with beta three. So it did actually score higher than beta three in the single core, but it was a bit lower, a tiny bit lower on the multi-core score. So pretty similar results to beta three. As I've said before, I'd expect pretty much every 18.5 beta to perform about the same. Now we might see a small bump in that performance with the RC, but it most likely will not be anything major. And the same goes with the battery life. Like, yes, we do have an A build here for this fourth beta. However, I do not think that the battery life is gonna change very much from beta to beta. Again, if we see any type of improvement, it's most likely gonna come with the RC build, which is, again, is most likely gonna be the final release. It's gonna be the same build as the final release, unless Apple releases an RC too, of course. Well, let's go ahead and talk about that because next week is when we're gonna see the RC build of iOS 18.5, and that's gonna come in May. So we should be seeing that most likely on Monday, May 5th. Apple has been sticking to these Mondays lately, so I would expect to see the RC or release candidate build of iOS 18.5 next week. And then we should see the final public release the following Monday on May 12th. And once again, with the RC build next week, I would anticipate those new wallpapers coming and potentially some other minor changes as well in the software. So we don't always see new features with the RC, but typically with the 0.5 releases, we do get those new wallpapers and potentially even some more features as well. And then of course, after 18.5 releases, we will start to see the first beta of iOS 18.6, which once again, is gonna be another minor update as everybody's waiting on iOS 19 to debut on Monday, June 9th. Anyways, that is iOS 18.5 beta four, a relatively minor update, but again, it was at least noteworthy enough to make a video on. Unlike last week with beta three, I did not want to make a video last week because there was really nothing new to talk about. There were a couple of changes here though with beta four that I did want to discuss and keep you guys in the loop on and pretty much a little bit more than I could describe in a community post. That's why I wanted to make this video. So anyways, if you guys enjoy these videos, as always, give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future future iOS 18 and iOS 19 videos. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.